Hey everyone, just a little quick note before we start this week's show. Uh, it's a shame. <laughs> just, uh, just Basically, just, oh, I'm it's sorry. a shame. I said last week that it would be better, and it, it isn't. Um, but next week it definitely will be better. But let's just tell you, this week's episode is going to be pretty chilled out. It's going to be pretty pretty smooth. What we're, what we're saying is, is it's very quiet, okay? Get off our dicks. It's going to be real quiet. Just don't listen to this one in the car or on the train. Or, you know, like where it's like a loud environment. Just, uh, it's a good episode, trust me. But, uh, yeah, it's just quite quiet. Again, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Let it be one where you can treat yourself to some peace and quiet. And we'll be there, not so much softly spoken. We'll, we'll still be probably shouting and laughing and everything, but just everything's reduced. <laughs> everything's just a little bit chilled out. So, yeah, I, I always, I like to do this. We did this a while ago with like How's Moving Castle or something, right? Where I suggested some drinks. Yeah. So what do you think the listeners should drink whilst they're listening to this chilled out episode? Definitely nothing fizzy, just in case you can hear the fizz. (laughs) (laughs) So maybe just a nice tepid glass of milk. (laughs) Nice and smooth. Also nothing with ice because you don't want to have the the clink. clink. Yeah. Uh, Nothing with like straws because you don't want to get that slurp. No. Absolutely not. So yeah, just a a, a warm milk. Okay. You can have alternative milks. So long as, oh, oh, you definitely want to make the milk before listening to the episode. I mean, when I say make the milk, I mean like milk the cow, obviously, previously. Obviously. But like, if you're going to heat up the milk, do that also before the episode. Yeah. So maybe like have a thermos flask so that you have enough to last the whole episode. Mm-hmm. Or you can have like multiple glasses that you put in the microwave all at one time. But then the first glass is going to be considerably warmer than the second and potentially even the third. I don't I don't want to judge you on how many glasses of milk you're going to drink in one episode. You've lost me. So, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You've lost me there, Kieran. I'm drink, sorry. Drink some milk. Listen to the episode. Yeah. Hello and welcome to 250 Reasons to Stay Indoors. I'm I was about to say no such thing as a fish. I don't know why. No, that's not our show. That's someone else's show. <laughs> we can't you've got your that. mug, it's just proper throwing me off. Yeah, fanboy. <laughs> um this is the podcast where we watch the IMDB top two hundred and fifty films. I'm Kieran, by the way. Yeah, sorry. And um, you're Jordan? I'm Jordan, yeah. And this is the podcast where we talk about the top two fifty films yeah. and we chat shit about them. Say whether they're worth staying indoors to watch or not. What are we watching this week, Kieran? This week, <laughs> we are watching Ben-Hur. Ben-Hur. Mm-hmm. And it came out in the year 1959. And it is number 197 on the list at the time of recording, which is when, Jordan? Right now. Right now. So, Jordan, have you seen Ben-Hur? I always want to say Ben-Hur. <laughs> which is I just... think that accurately like translates into the film, doesn't it? Really? Well, probably because what? Because you're anticipating it being so crazy. It's more like Ben. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. We checked it out. This film is three hours forty five minutes long. Yeah. But by the time that we, I mean, I'm going to end up like pausing it to take notes and stuff. It's going to be an easy four hours. Yeah. It does include an intermission though, which is nice. Great. Great. <laughs> so I've heard. So I either have time to reflect. Yeah. So you can or, sit and you know, or just get, or get some popcorn. Good. So, so you haven't watched it before? No. Okay, nor have I. What do you, do you have any idea what it's going to be about? Um, I get like Spartacus type vibes from it, you know? Uh-huh. Like uh, going to be set in, I want to say like Gladiator, but like so, Romany so- olden times, you know? I get like the same sort of Life of Brian type, that period, yeah. that that time where people wear skirt, men, like men in, men in uniform wear skirts <laughs> that are pleated and, and fluffy head things. <laughs> <laughs> Great description of Roman clothing. Togas. Is he saying togas? No, togas like a full body thing, isn't Loin it? Loincloths. No, I mean like the the Short centurion. Um, oh, oh, centurion. You've got like, yeah, you've got like a skirt, haven't you? Not instead of like uh, legs. I would really like to see <laughs> skirts come back for men. Yeah. But like smart, smart, you know. Smart suit. skirts. Smart skirts, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But not, not as in like they have an Apple Watch in them, but like. Like, um, you know, do they just look look formal? They, they track your steps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got a pedometer inside they it. Measure the air pressure in between your legs. <laughs> You're just tracking the, the dangle of the balls yeah. like, at various times of the day. Um, it just connects up to your phone. You can look on your phone. How's it hanging? Slightly <laughs> to, it's three centimeters to the left today. 
<laughs> you could, the app can be called How's It Hanging. That, yeah. That's a that's, that's okay. Um, I think it's uh, going to be Romans, like you said. No, 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 that's not what I thought it was going to be. Okay. I, when I generated, well, when we generated the yeah. film, and I checked it out on IMDb to see how long the running time was. Yeah. Um, and you didn't tell me. I didn't tell you because <laughs> I didn't want you to say. Because no. I wouldn't watch it. No, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm not lie. Exactly. Of course, that's why I didn't tell you. Um, I saw a picture of a guy looking like he was in a stable. So for me, he looks a bit Jesusy. Okay. And furthermore, the the way that the poster is, it's like big 3D blocks letters. Ben Hurt! The same way that the Life of Brian is big words. Yeah, so yeah. it looked to me like Life of Brian might have been some kind of a Maybe street. it was inspired by it. Who knows? Mm. Who knows? Uh, should we just go watch the film? Yeah, let's do it. Nice one. And we're back with a couple of fast thoughts. Boring as fuck. <laughs> Dust. Jesus. Uh, Nazareth. Jews. Romans. Lepers. Ooh, uh, uh, um... I was just about to say like mums and dads and sisters, but that's... Oh, that's too generic. Uh, uh, romance. Wagons. Chariots. Horses. Uh, Arabs. Wages. Row, row, row your boat. Slaves. The drum that keeps the, the rowing in time. Did we say Romans? We'll go go for it again. Romans. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 okay, no. no we, we did already say Romans. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we'll leave it there then, shall cool. we? Um, are you ready with your, your 15 second pitch? And let me tell you listeners, this is the 15 second pitch where I, Kieran, try and sum up the film in 15 seconds. I'm going to try and sum up a three hour and 45 minute film into 15 seconds. Yeah? Yeah, go. Three, two, one, go. There's a Jew and a Roman that they were buddies, but now they hate each other because the Romans are overtaking the Jews. The Jew uh, like gets sent to the galleys. His mother and sister get sent to the dungeons. They turn into lepers. He tries to save their lives. He saves loads of Jews, I guess. Wins a chariot race and fucks up the Romans. 14.68. So that rounds up. No, no. Does it? Yeah. No, no, because no, if it's, oh, if yeah, it's, it's point not eight, Jordan maths, is it? Jordan maths. If it's point eight, maths. then it rounds down. Mm. So this is because Jordan maths. It doesn't maths, really like help in any way, no, does it actually? It just maths, levels it out. It's Jordan just, maths for favors. that one particular situation, it was useful and we kept using it from then on. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the one time where it was 15.8 yeah. or 15.7, we decided that point eight and below that rounds down. <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> that, that yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, fuck. Did I, was that not a good job, though? Do you not think that was a great... Yeah, that was a good job. Yeah. I, I was quite I, proud I felt of it was very much worthy of 15 seconds, but oh. well, never mind. Also, I timed you on my watch this time, and I usually use my phone, and I can't tell you how much more professional that felt. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there just like with my watch, like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Should we just go into a synopsis? So. You've got your boy Jesus. Right, <laughs> and he get he gets born. Yeah. So this is happening at the time of Jesus. <laughs> what time is it today? <laughs> time of Jesus. <laughs> what Jesus o'clock? <laughs> what time of Jesus is it? Yeah. It's quarter Je past. It's quarter past Jesus. <laughs> so we've got this guy Ben Hur, and he is uh, part of this. He's the house of Hur, and and he's like uh, in Jerusalem. Yeah. He's a big deal in Jerusalem. King of the Jews. Yeah. He's a prince. Vibe. Prince Hur, isn't it? Yeah. Um, no. He's Prince the, Judah. Yeah, it's Ben Hur well, Judah or no, something like that. No, he's Judah Ben Hur. Judah Ben Hur, sorry. So his bad, first yeah. name is Judah, which I spent ages in the film trying to work out if his actual name was Judah or if his actual name was Ben Hur. Uh, so his, his name is Judah Ben Hur. Yeah. And he is part, he's, in, he's an aristocrat in Jerusalem. Yeah. But the Romans are coming in fucking shit up. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's got this buddy. Judah Ben Hur has got this buddy, Masala. Yeah, Masala. Yeah. Um, and so Judah Ben Hur, Chicken Tikka Masala. It's just, it was going to happen, wasn't it? There was, it was no way it was ever going to be as avoided. As if we were going to yeah. do this film and have yeah. this guy. Yeah, of course it was. And so Roman Tikka. <laughs> they were they were buddies back in the day, and but now they've grown apart because the Roman has gone and gone yeah. to Rome and he's done all his Roman stuff and started to invade the rest of the world. And then the Jew is like, he's been big big balls. He's just been balls. lounging about yeah. in his castle oh. with his servants. So the, the Romans come in and the, the Masala's like, hey, man, hey, we were buddies, right? Hey, what's going on? And he's like, yeah, yeah, we we're buddies. And everything. And, but then ultimately he's like, well, if you're not going to get on board with me invading you, then I guess we're enemies. But Masala asked uh, Ben-Hur to um, find the people that were sort of talking against yeah, Rome. Shit about and, yeah, and he was like, yeah, you know, most of them are for you, but there's a couple that aren't. And Masala's like, who? And he's like, why do you need to know? And he's just like, 
oh, you're protecting the lives of criminals. And he's like, these are my people, not criminals. And it's like, you know what, actually, bro, you're not really being a bro right now. Um, and I don't want to be your friend anymore. And then they part ways. Yeah. So then like, what is it? There's like so, a so they're part grand ways old Duke of Rome comes. <laughs> grand old Duke of Rome. There's a new governor that comes Right, that's town, it, yeah. <laughs> and you got your, Ben-Hur is on the roof of his building, well, he's on his terrace. And yeah. and he and his sister are hanging out and they're watching these the new governor and everyone coming into the city. Mm -hmm. And they're leaning on some tiles and his sister like no, accidentally knocks a tile and it hits the governor, apparently kills him. Yeah. Now, now, now I think about it, if you get hit on the head by a tile from like 10 meters, it might kill you. Yeah. But it made it look as if, the, it, as if he was knocked off his horse and that's what killed him. Yeah. Yeah. It was just very strange. It was fucking dumb. But anyway, um, so, so Judah goes down because everyone, all the Romans are like, who the fuck killed the governor? Blah, blah, blah. Judah goes down. He's like, he takes responsibility for it. Oh, it was me. It was an accident. Blah, blah, mm. blah, blah, blah. He gets sent to the dungeons. And so does his mum and his sister. In the, so he was mum and his sister in one dungeon. You got him in another one. Yeah. And uh, he, he like breaks out of his dungeon or some shit. And he goes to Masala and he's like, liberate my mum and my sister. He doesn't end up, like Masala doesn't liberate his mum and his sister. And Ben-Hur just gets sent to the galleys. Yeah. Which is like this, the slave part of a ship when they, they row the ship. Mm -hmm. right? um, there's a new consort, I think it is, that comes onto the ship. Just another grand old Duke of Rome right, comes Duke onto the ship. This, 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 this and is he's after, like, after three years yeah. on ships. It's so like, yeah, we don't really get told there's been a time gap no. until, until he says, ben I, says I've spent been, yeah. three years and one month on, on, on ships. And it is super rare for people to survive even one year on a ship. And he's, uh, he's survived it because of the hatred in his eyes, blah, 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 blah. Because he really wants to get his own back on, yeah. on Masala and he wants to find his mum and sister. So the whole film was about him finding his mum and his sister and getting vengeance yeah. on Masala. So this grand old Duke of Rome, he like makes the rowers, like puts them to the test and he keeps making them row faster and faster. And but when he finally tells them to stop, it's basically like only a few of them standing and Ben is one of them. And we see him like making loads of co eye contact with this grand old duke and he's sort of giving it like a hmm you impress me boy kind of deal um so, so they, what happens when is they the, go into battle yeah they go into battle um and the ship is like sort of exploded a bit and uh ben, well, there's a whole chain thing there's a yeah um they're all, all they're all chained to the boat and so that they don't someone, run away in the middle of the battle yeah and then is it the Grand Old Duke that unchains him? He's like, uh, he's, he says, unchain number 41. Right, yeah. Um, so he gets him unchained, basically. They get rammed by a boat. Mm. So everyone's losing their shit. And, mm. and but, but they're all chained to the deck. Yeah. Apart from Ben-Hur. So he knocks out one of the guards, takes his, his keys, liberates all of the, all the slaves in the boat, goes to the top deck, sees that his consort guy, Grand Old Duke of Rome, is about to get killed. He throws Ben Hur throws a spear at the guy oh, shit, who's about, yeah, about my to bad. kill him. Totally but then up. the consort Duke guy still gets knocked off the boat. He goes and saves him. They they find a piece of driftwood and they just sit on this piece of driftwood. Get saved by uh like the next day get saved by another Roman boat mm -hmm. and your your man Duke of York is or Duke of Rome is like oh this is the dude this is the slave that saved me yeah and so they become buddies go back to Rome and they're all like ah. Oh, Let's let's stay buddies, me and you. Ben ends up being the adopted son of this Roman guy. Not being, he becomes. Well, the he adopted. becomes. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. He, um, he, he becomes the adopted son of this Roman guy after like another like two or three years or sure, something. Sure. Um, and in this time, apparently, he's been racing horses. Well, Why apparently, not? that's kind of Ben's thing, but we never see it. No, nope. until the end of the film. But anyway, um, he then where does he go? So he goes, <laughs> his mission is to go back to Jerusalem to yeah. find his mum and his sister because he says to his adopted father, uh, I can't remember, it's in my notes somewhere what this fucking guy's name is, but he's like son of Adj or something. Son of Adj. Yeah, yeah, a son of Adj. And he, but Adj is like, uh, I can tell you want to go back to Jerusalem, I can't stop you, you take this ring, blah, 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 it's the seal of my house. Yeah. And shit. Whatever. So on his way back to Jerusalem, he stops off at this, um, he, he needs to rest somewhere for a day and there's a guy who's got horses but Ben Hur knows horses, and he can see the guy who's like training the horses mm. and like doing the chariot thing. Because with the chariot racing, there's like four horses like right next to each other, and yeah. they have to run as a team and all this stuff. And Ben says to this merchant, this Arabic merchant guy, he's like, "Oh, well, you 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 need to swap the way round, blah blah blah. That, that that horse should go there. That horse that horse should go there. I know my shit about horses." And the Arabic dude's like, "Ah, oh, well, can you be my horse rider? Like you fucking just like that. You know, you know horses and shit." And and Ben's like. 
Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that, that not really got much on at the moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm my just... my wife, no, my my mum and sister are missing for for years, and I've got vengeance to exact. But no, in the yeah, meantime, I've, I've I've got some time. So he he trains up some horses. He's training a little bit with the horses, but he goes to Jerusalem. He's like, oh yeah, I'll come back. Goes to Jerusalem, and this woman who is the daughter of his of Ben's servant or something, she's called think- Esther. Ben her goes to back to Jerusalem, and he's like. Uh, where's my mum and sister? Esther finds him. and we, we, He goes to see Esther. And Esther's like, oh my God, I'm in love with you. I haven't seen you for so long. Blah, 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 blah. Your mum and, and sister are dead. Because it turns out that his mum and sister actually aren't dead. Mm. They're actually lepers. And they, but the mum and sister are like, we don't want Ben to know that that's who we are now. Yeah. So just tell him that, just don't tell him anything. And we want him to have good memories of us. So Esther's like, oh, yeah, yeah, they're dead. Sorry, bro, they're dead. And he's like, okay, I've got to get a super vengeance. So he goes back to the merchant, trains funk loads with the horses, gets sick at racing horses, goes to do the big horse race in Jerusalem, and there's people from Cyprus and all over the Roman Empire. You've got Masala from Rome. It's basically a showdown between Masala from Rome and Ben-Hur from Jerusalem. And long story short, uh, Ben, ben wins. Ben wins. <laughs> and in the process, Masala's Masala gets like mashed up. Mashed up, yeah, yeah, injuries, and he, he dies. But not before saying to saying to Ben Hur on his deathbed, he's like, sick the sickest acting in the film for me was was the deathbed thing, where he was like, oh, the race isn't actually over because your mum and sister aren't actually dead. They're lepers now, and you can find them in the leper colony. So Ben has like, what the fuck? He goes back to Jerusalem. It's, he screams at Esther like, why did you lie to me? Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to go find my mum mm. and my sister because I want to save them and everything. So he goes to Leper Colony, finds them, and he's like distraught and whatever. Mm. But Esther like gives them food. They fuck off. Esther goes to a Sermon on the Mount. So Jesus is Sermon on the Mount because every now and then Jesus has been popping around being like, hey, I'm the sickest. But they go back to the Leper Colony because Ben's like, I really want to save them now. And Esther... Like, Est- Esther I really want to, yeah, save, really them now. Want to save them now. I'm, I'm... Right now. So Ben and Esther take his mum and his sister to go see Jesus. But this is the day that Jesus is going to be crucified. Fuck. Oh, no. Fuck. So he's like, they're on the side of the road. And they see Jesus struggling with his cross and everything. He gets chucked on the crucifix. Um but, and it rains that night, and because of the rain, like washing the blood of Christ into the streams and the water, they're walking away from uh, wherever it was and the, where he was getting crucified. And it turns out that that, that the mum and the sister are now cured of leprosy. Yep. And the mum, the sister, Ben, her, and Esther go back to Jerusalem. They have their nice house. They all lived happily ever after. Yeah. End of film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. End of film. Sick. Wow, that was pretty. You know why that was easy? Because this film is actually incredibly straightforward. Yeah, it was just really really long yeah so you want to do some beefs do i want to do some beefs oh my god the film starts with a a, a prologue is, yeah. is that what it's called no it's, uh, called no, overture. it's an overture. overture yeah i'm just like obviously it's in 1959 and i think maybe the cinema was a bit more of a big deal like it was a more of an yeah. a, an event you go out for the day you know like with all the family i mean you would have to book a day off work wouldn't you well, unless you went on a Saturday. I don't know if they what? had Saturdays back then. Um, <laughs> no, but like, you know, so it's like the big fucking... So I'm just n- n- not watching it normally. I'm like, this is just fucking the balls on this film to just be like, and here's some music first to get you in the mood. For six six whole minutes. Yeah. And you think the piece is going to end and that... and Because that, it's just a blank screen. It's just a blank screen that says... Well, uh, it's a still image yeah. that says overture and then a, the picture of, of God and then the thingy with the touching fingers and yeah. whatever. That sounds a bit creepy, but you, you know what the picture is when you see yeah, it. Yeah, you know that, and, that painting. And, and, and I thought that my screen was bugging out. Like I was like, oh, the images aren't moving, but I can hear <laughs> the audio, so I thought something was going wrong. But no, it's just six and a half yeah. minutes of... Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. I tried to skip it and it kept on fucking with the buffering and it just drove me insane. I ended up having to watch the same like six minutes like for probably about 12 minutes oh, because dude. of the amount <laughs> that I tried to fuck with it. 
so it wasn't worth it. No. Like, you know what? The music was it was cool. Like, it was like, all oh, right, this is a big deal music. It's yeah, just, but I'm okay. watching it knowing that it's three hours and 45 minutes. And I'm like, <laughs> I am skimming wherever I can. <laughs> and then the worst part is the version that I loaded um, had the default uh, sound uh, audio to set to Hindu. So why? I it, why? thought that the film was all going to be in a different language as well. <laughs> so I was like, three hours and 45 minutes of subtitles just kill me dead. Oh, man. Kill me now. So so there's that. And there's the same thing when the intermission happens. Like, you can fully go make a sandwich in the time that, yeah. that the music yeah. is happening. I think that's the point, though, isn't in, it? In, cause, because there's not <laughs> they only... They didn't is... have Sky Plus back then. <laughs> no, no, but like, listen, like, it's not just the intermission because you pause the film at the intermission, right? Yeah. To go and make a sandwich. Yeah. You come back and you're like, all right, I'm ready to resume the film for another like hour and 45 minutes, two yeah. hours. And then there's an on track, which is another piece of music to introduce you back into. It's not a musical. It's not a musical. No, it's unnecessary. We're is not what it watching is. like fucking Hamilton or Les Miserables. Like it's, yeah. it's a bloody film. Like yeah. let's get on with it. Yeah. Just takes forever. A, a really terrible line right at the start when um one of the centurions is talking to Masala um because they're they're sort of building world building at this point you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah teaching yeah, yeah. you through the Act through one. the dialogue yeah one of the, the centurion is just like for instance there's this new mes- messiah for instance except for oh, instance so he says, tw- like he sandwiches uh, his sentence with for instance I'm like how does that get approved in a script <laughs> or how how does no one pick up on that? Why did you not reshoot that? Like, I, I reckon there are a few points where like, you can tell that someone's interrupted someone before the end of their line. Yeah. And so the person finishes their line and then they restart. The person responding restarts their it's line. fucking standards, man, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, come on, you guys. You're setting out to make this fucking epic, like, three hour, 45 minute film and you can't, like, well, maybe that's why it's three yeah. hour, 45 minutes because they didn't fucking cut anything out. Or maybe they only had like two days on set and they were like, guys, we, we like they, they, <laughs> they spent a the whole day moving scenery around. Yeah. So they've actually only got like two minutes per scene. Yeah, maybe. Everything was like first take. So it was a miracle that it's any good. Yeah. Ma- Masala was just so incredibly insensitive. It's just unreal that anyone could actually be such a prick. But so he's talking to Ben um, and he's talking about how great Rome is and like uh, talking about how they've conquered everyone. And like one of the words, one of the things he says to him, like Ben says something that's not particularly nice to him. And he's just like, oh, you're not very kind to your conquerors, are you? <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, you've, you're like, there's like a reuniting scene. Like they're supposed to be like best buds and you're just being an absolute dick. Like I would not be friends with you. Like, well, no, but it's, it's the, like, it's the whole being trained by the Roman like idea of I know yeah uh, yeah he's a, but whether but it's his fault or not he's just a prick and <laughs> the amount of times that they, that they just shit on the Jewish religion yeah like it's so, like it's, it's no so big deal. It's like yeah we all, like he's like come on we all know that your God is not the real God the real God the only person with divinity is, is Caesar obviously yeah like, we know this don't we come on there's just no need for that and, and, no, and, 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 no and all need. the Jews are like uh... <laughs> yeah. And then there's the scene, right, this is still at the start, where they've, they've Masala and uh, Ben-Hur have been reunited for the first sort of time. And then they pick up some spears and they're like, oh, we're going to be, we're going to do some, let's do some throwing like back in the old days. Mm-hmm. They both throw a spear at the wall and it like, land, like so Masala throws one and then Ben throws his and it lands like directly next to him. Yeah. And it, the camera just focuses on it and the music's like, Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> it's just like okay i get the fucking imagery i get it they're like close together they're brothers yeah i get it and it's just like no 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 have more horns yes this more film trumpets. is so fucking ham-fisted with like the metaphors and the imagery it's just like look at the imagery understand the complex things that we're trying to say <laughs> Like, the, the, like the, this is another one of those films where you could just cut out one thing that happens a lot and the film would be so much shorter. Yeah. And so the thing that would be cut out is those moments where it's like a, uh, someone looking distraught or sad or yeah. like about to cry and the music's like, blah, blah, blah. You're like you don't need it. There's we like one. It. We, there's, we get it. We get it. There's one right at the end where um, I think his, his, it's either his mum is talking to him or his uh, sister, someone just basically is like crying and crying. She's like, "You've, it's like you've become Masala. 
And it's like, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I said, get yeah. it. The metaphor he's turned that, into what he hates. Yeah. Get it. That's <laughs> Fuck's sake. That's Esther. And, and she does this. It fucks me off so much because the way that women were portrayed back in the day, mm. it's like as these weak characters. Yeah. So that's stuff. how they portrayed them in this anyway, because it's. Of well, course, I've, well, I mean, not yes. not not only is it set like two thousand years ago, so there's that. Yeah, but also, <laughs> it's, also it's filmed in 1959. in 1959. So it's like, okay, we've already got a ridiculous amount of patriarchy because of what's going on. Yeah, and also it's in 1959. So the amount of times that Esther did this whole like, you could tell that she was trying to build the tears in her eyes to make her look like she had yeah. tears in her eyes, and she does this distraught look away of like, okay, I'm going to do it, Jordan. Can you give an audio description? Of okay, like, he does like a distraught look away, and, then, and he's. <gasps> And then, oh, and then a sudden turn of the head in absolute disgust. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that. It's the yeah. sudden turn away. And like, oh, God, oh, no, surely not. Was, okay. There was really? like a really distinct, like, lack of apology for the way that women were portrayed, the way that they spoke to, like, servants. Like, and what I mean by that is... You can. Eat, it just doesn't look like in the actors' eyes they have any issue with it. Well, that, surely that makes them good actors. Maybe, because yeah. That's I the don't role. know. I just I felt really uncomfortable <laughs> with it. It didn't feel like like there's a scene where there's like loads of they're in. The... I just love the idea of like it's, if this film was made these days, yeah. you would have the actors like you just you just see right at the end of the scene or like in the background them going so sorry just like <laughs> a quick look mean... at the camera and like a, a in a, a gym look in the in from the office. No, don't worry. Um, I look to the camera, sort of just like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all good because it's in the script. Ooh. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, there was like a scene where there's like entertainment for the night amongst these Romans and it's just like loads people. of black people like dancing. And it's like, oh, just looking at all of these like white people standing around staring at them and they're like in sort of some sort of like tribal outfits and stuff that they obviously, mm. oh, it's just like, and it's just like the way that if even if that was done the same way in these days, the way it would be filmed wouldn't be the same. Yeah, it's, that's what I mean. It's, like it's, it's not like the actual fact that, that that was the case because you can't deny that that was a thing that happened. Yeah, like yeah, I'm sure that they did that. I'm sure that's actually pretty accurate. <laughs> but the way that it's done, the way that it's filmed, just makes it look like oh yeah, like the people in 1959 is like yeah 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 yeah. So now br now bring in the black people. Yeah yeah you exactly. Can, you can imagine the directors be. being like oh we don't have enough servants in this scene. We need more slaves. Like we or like yeah. you know just like oh no sorry, that woman looks far too empowered. Can you? Just look a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weaker, yeah. please. Weaker, yeah. please. <laughs> oh no. I, I've, I've got. A, a, I mean, I've got a bunch of specific beefs. Um, but the the one that kind of gets me, that got me the most, was there's a there's a little scene where it's following the the North Star or the the Star of Jesus or whatever. Yeah. And and there's a very faint ring around the star when right. you first see it moving. And then the ring just gets brighter and brighter and brighter, as if to tell the clearly dumbass audience, "Hey, look at this ring! Uh, look, <laughs> look, look, look at this fucking star that's going across the sky! Hey, hey, look!" Yeah. And, and then there's like a, a beam of light that shines down on the stable. Okay, first of all, well, that clearly didn't happen, um, <laughs> as in the way that the light was shining on the stable is like, come on! And so the three wise men go to the stable. Are you questioning the angelic uh, luminosity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? <laughs> am I questioning the, the fluorescence of, of our <laughs> Lord Jesus? Yes, I am. Oh man! Um, and, and but then uh, there's one of the people at the stable who I guess are kind of curious of, as to what's going on. They see the three wise men come in, give their gifts, and they, uh, th at that point they're like, "Oh, I guess this is the Messiah. Oh, this is the guy that we've been hearing about. Is like." the big Jesus, whatever. And so he brings out this horn from his pocket and goes, <laughs> as if you would just have a break glass for emergency Jesus. Yeah. Like horn. I've got one. <laughs> so any time that you see the Messiah. Keep like, it under my pillow. Just, just in case he turns up. You never up. know. I, oh, just, it was just so, no. I imagine that just in the morning, the alarm clock goes off. You go to turn it off and then Jesus's hand just <laughs> stops you, just turns it off. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Jesus. my son. Jesus, fuck! It's, <laughs> it's the time of Jesus, of yeah. course. It's Jesus o'clock. It's quarter past. <laughs> You're late for Jesus. Ten to Jesus. 
how many voices were overdubbed? Please tell me you heard it. No, I, mean, I don't see them. I, maybe I, 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 maybe don't I don't pay enough attention to it. Or... Be, because you hear the voices, like say there's two people, yeah. two people in a room and you've got one person who you can tell like there's microphones in that room and they're picking up the, the sound of the room. And, oh, no, actually and, tell a lie. I did catch a couple. And so imagine the conversation is like, okay, I'm going to go a little bit off mic so you get the idea. And so it's a little bit over here. It's talking back into the room. La, 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 la. And, and then suddenly it's like, yes, that is what we heard from Rome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Straight onto the mic. It's like, come on, you guys. Come on. Any more beefs? Uh, well, yeah. Let's be real. Like, none of those people would really be white apart from the Romans. No. Like, how many people would be sunburnt as well? Like, actually, actually you saw loads of those actors. They're all fucking sunburnt. Like, yeah. On the ship and everything. Like, that's, that's a struggle for those, for the, just the people on, on set. Been constantly sunburned. Whereas, ironically, the, the people that were rowing the boat would probably be the least sunburned because they stay under the boat. I mean, I'm not saying that that's that's therefore makes up for them being slaves and having to row for hours and hours. And I mean, hours and no, hours. I mean, Kieran, we're not saying that slaves are good. Like, I don't think anyone's thinking that we're like in possibly, you know, but, considering that. But, but a pro of being a slave in the galleys yeah. is that you don't get a sunburn. But, Always there are silver linings in everything. Doesn't mean that the things are overall good, but there are silver linings. As 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 slim as they may be. I had one issue with um the chariot racing. Oh my god, okay. Let's talk about the chariot. I mean, Sorry. I mean, other than the fact that it's the only good part of the film, all right. Masala, um, when he gets trampled by all the horses, there's absolutely not a chance that he would still be alive. Oh no, he'd be dead as fuck. Like and his body would be much more misshapen. Like he just looks like basically you see a rag doll fall on the floor and then about seven horses go over it <laughs> again and again. Cause they're going around in a circle. Like yeah. you, you get at least like two laps of him being trampled and then they just put him on a stretcher and he's in the bed. I mean, yeah, he's fucked and he does die shortly after, but he's sort of still talking. He's like, no, I will not receive him whilst I am mm. still like, and he's like, we need to cut your legs off. And he's like, no, 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 you will not cut my legs off just yet. I still need my legs, even though I can't walk on them. I, I will not receive him as half a man. No, yeah. No, yeah. Is Which is says. quite a nice line actually. And I did kind of, I, 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 that suited uh, that character quite well. Quite yeah. Like that. So, but, so I but he, that guy would be dead. Yeah. He would be dead and his face would look like Play-Doh. <laughs> I have a huge beef with the whole chariot race. With bits in it. Oh, lovely. <laughs> just teeth poking out and yeah. bones and shit. Um, what, what, one of my biggest beefs of, of that scene is, all right, the chariot racing circuit is like an athletics track, yeah. but much wider. And the horses come out of the, of the gates, but like really, really slowly so that they can all do one big lap where everyone's like, oh, it's my fucking horse. Oh, yeah, it's my guy from Jerusalem. Yeah. He's my guy. He's my guy. Yeah, yeah. And they do one big lap and then, they, and then they line up again. But before they do this big lap, you can see that the sand is immaculate. It's like, yeah. It looks beautiful. And as they go around, you see all the horse footsteps, all the hoof steps yeah. and stuff. And so when they go around one corner, mm. it's like, okay, they just go around one corner and then Jordan, you zoom out, you see the like the scenery of the arena again. Yeah. And they go around another another corner, but you look at the arena again, and there's only the amount of footsteps for having gone around one corner. So clearly they use the shot of them going around the corner twice. Oh, very astute. Well done. But to make but in fact they only went around the corner once. Like yeah. they they fucked up the I they either fucked up the order in which they put the shots, or they just wanted to make they they just wanted to rinse. Uh, the the like the, the the whole going around the corner thing. Yeah. And there were loads of times where like there's a shot of Ben Hur like riding his chariot. Yeah. He's riding, he's riding, he's riding, and he's got one person next to him. And then the immediate next shot, there's a different rider next to him. Yeah. And so of course there's a load of horses that are running around. What it's, it's not explaining is there's actually three year time gaps in between each of those shots. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, when when the um the the go well, I can't I don't know if it's the governor the, the grand old duke of Jerusalem uh, when he does his talk afterwards when he crowns yeah, yeah. Uh, when he crowns fucking Ben Hur like the king of his people or whatever, yeah. no one can hear you. No, no one can hear you. It's a massive stadium. It's there's thousands of people there. Yeah, no one can hear. They you. haven't quite grasped the uh the the Britney Spears mic yet. No, they haven't got any of that amplification down. Yeah. So like little headset. But yeah, they got they got they got none of that. But the the acoustics of um that area 
would that not carry it a little bit? Because it's like when they have um, I've forgotten what they're called now, but for uh, theaters, where, and the velodrome is it the velodrome? Come on, children. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Have you seen a show in a velodrome? I know what a velodrome is. I <laughs> I don't understand how the hell my brain confused an amphitheater with a velodrome. And you watch the cycling in the amphitheater? I think I'm thinking of like the velocity of your voice. <laughs> w- okay. Which doesn't All make right. any sense. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe. But he wasn't talking nearly No, it's enough. fine. Don't give me that. I don't deserve it. Like, he, no, like, I, I, I want to see him speaking into like a massive, like speaking into like a voice horn. I don't know if that's just a thing. Just a... You know, a piece of paper rolled up into like a cone. Like a newspaper roll. Or a traffic cone. <laughs> <laughs> People of Rome. Be perfect. I have been to the future. <laughs> and I got this traffic cone from Leicester Square. And I have harnessed the power of reflective materials technology. <laughs> Never again cru- shall we be trampled in the night. <laughs> At three hours and 26 minutes. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's when Jesus is is being sentenced to the cross. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, uh, so he's in this big town square and the whole of whatever Getting city. some shopping done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's just Need running. To bo- no, nip into boots for some bits. <laughs> bits and boots. Yeah. And uh, and he's just, um, you know, going to the post office, sending yeah. some parcels. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Doing, doing the good work. <laughs> Paying his gas bill. Yeah. Whatever else. Um, he, uh, Do you reckon Jesus paid council tax? I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they had taxes back then, didn't they? Yeah. Also, I bloody love the way that, um, that Joseph gets called on by someone in his house. And Joseph's got loads of, still got loads of carpentry to do. Mm. And uh, this guy's like, oh, my table's not done yet. Where the fuck's Jesus? And, um, and Joseph's like, oh, I'm not worried about him. He's fine. And you wouldn't worry about, about Jesus yeah, because you, you know you? That, that you've got the son of God on your side. Yeah. So I'm not fussed. Why if anything, you... I'd be more concerned about being a good stepdad. Like, you know, like how the, the, the dad can sometimes become a little bit annoyed with the stepdad. Yeah. You don't want God being angry with you for raising your kid wrong. No. And and this is something just I want to Just imagining bring... God sitting there, like looking down, seeing Joseph like playing catch with him, just like, uh, he's teaching him that all wrong. <laughs> Fuck's sake. And you could just be smitten so easily, couldn't you? Anyway, going back to Jesus in the town square, doing a shopping. Yeah. He, he's getting a, a sentence to, the, uh, be, to be crucified. And they've made such a huge effort to make sure that Jesus, his face isn't being shown. Yeah. But you clearly know it's Jesus at other points in the film. To the point where like, you see him when he's standing in the crowd and like, there's a black shadow over his face that Why? is literally being formed from nothing. Exactly. They've, superimposed. <laughs> They've just blacked out his face. Like, what? 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 No. No. How far we've come now. We've got Jesus in South Park. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, yeah. They're, they're clearly a lot happy about doing that now. So that was just such a huge piece of bullshit. Also, finally, yeah, on a level... Yeah. Jesus. Right. So I made this list. Okay. This is a, this is a series of events. Yeah. I'm not criticizing Christianity. I'm just making an Heaven observation. Forbid. I have hey! This is just an observation. So this is how it goes down. Jesus. Yeah. He gets popular. He does a sermon on the mount and everyone's like, "Oh, he's the best guy." Romans, they're not having it. They're like, we, we don't like this. Sorry, team. are you just telling us what happened in the Bible? Yeah. Right. Romans <laughs> decide to crucify Jesus. Now, herein lies the rub. Jesus says, it's all cool because I'm taking on everyone else's sins. And that's why I'm being crucified. Right. So he gets crucified. And he comes back. And because he said he was getting crucified for everyone else's sins, everyone still loves him. Mm. But that's got nothing to do with it. Like the Romans hated him because he was making a fuss. Mm. And Jesus then saying, oh, yeah, it's because I'm taking on your sins. He was just making on the best of a situation. You know, mm. he, he was just doing the best he could with the cards he was dealt. And he was saying, oh, I'm being, being crucified. How can I still keep these people on side? I guess I'm dying for your sins. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. He he was just manipulating the situation to make himself like, oh, yeah, I'm still good. 
I'm wow. still good. I'm still the guy. <laughs> I'm still I'm still in control of this. Like this was meant to happen. It's all good. Don't worry about it, guys. He's shitting himself. Like yeah. in real in real life, he's absolutely cacking himself because <laughs> he's about to be crucified. But but just like on the surface, he's like, no, 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 no. I'm doing it for your sins. And everyone's like, oh, he's such a martyr, yeah. isn't he? So I just I was kind of a bit a bit dubious of of, of that story. I'm like, mm. well, there you have it, the long lost pages of the controversial <laughs> book of Kieran. <laughs> that, that's, that's so the- Jesus, right? He goes down. <laughs> he's like, I'm good. The Romans are like, we're not having it. But he's like, no, I'm doing it for the people. But did he? I don't know. There you go. There you go. That's <laughs> find out next on chapter two, of the book of Kieran. <laughs> Should we do some bits and bobs? You got any more beefs? Uh, no, that's all of my beefs. There was like a cow that was mooing right at the start. Oh, this is a beef really again, but... Well, well it's a cow, isn't it? A, so it would be beef. Yeah. And it just mooed. And it was the same moo because I think they just had the one recording of yeah. a cow moo. <laughs> so it's just like <laughs> constant, just like moo, moo, <laughs> moo. I'm pretty sure I heard the same scream like several times in a row as well. Yeah. Ah! Well, that's like the Wilhelm scream, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't, hear, I didn't hear the Wilhelm scream. But it was another one that it was. Mm. The scream. more I think about it, the more I think this was, in, this did influence the life of Brian because it's got that whole yeah. thing of like Jesus happening at the same time, mm-hmm. like alongside. We also forgot to mention the part where G- where Jesus um, gives Ben some water when he's in the desert. Yeah, because the only reason that's important is because at the end of the film, Ben gives some water to Jesus. Yeah, and it's like. Symbolism <laughs> in the tree. <laughs> oh my god! Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, we get it. We get it. We do. We do get it. Uh, so Joseph, as we sp- we spoke about him being the stepdad and whatever, he's like the very first and ultimate cuck, isn't he? Yes, he really is. Yes, the so, alpha cuck. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he he is the primary number one example. The primary and, cuck. <laughs> and you, you can't get cut. In the beginning, there was the primary <laughs> cuck. You, th- Joseph, there's... first of his name. <laughs> Joseph, fucks the first cucksman. And <laughs> you, you can't get cucked in a more ela- in, in a more like elaborate or or um fancy way. So let's say I have a partner and I want to be cucked or someone cucks me. Mm. Jordan has sex with my partner and I watch. Basically, yeah, that kind of And so of, I'm being vibe. a cuck. Yeah. Now, so therefore Joseph is the cuck and the ultimate dom of the situation is God. And <laughs> it doesn't get any bigger than that, does it? The ultimate dominatrix in the sky. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Like, like it just, how could it just get any more powerful than that? You've got God. And then Joseph is like, well, I guess I'm a cuck for the rest of my life, aren't yeah. I? Because God is the Omega guy. cucked. Yeah, <laughs> Omega cucked. So yeah. I uh, just wanted to point out that Joseph was a uh, cuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How did people shave back in the day? With, oh, yeah, actually, I think I read about this. <laughs> um, okay, go on. That razors have been a- around for a lot longer than, oh, wait, no, no, no. Um, It's the disposable razors. Uh, they didn't come around till about like the 50s or the 60s or something. Okay. That's it. Oh, all right, it was, a, yeah. it was a fun fact about the disposable razors. Yeah, because beforehand they had like the clean. You had the yeah the close sh- shave, the, close, the the big blade, basically. What's the name for that? Why can't I remember? The cutthroat razor. Cutthroat. There you go. Cutthroat razors. Yeah. Um, but before that, I don't think you just use a knife, didn't you, or anything sharp? But if they're on a boat that whole time, like, yeah. I just, I just would have thought shaving. that. I just thought it was unrealistic. I don't think that would they really have cared if they. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's don't like know. like with Das Boot, the Das Boot. Yeah. They just had beards because who gives a fuck about shaving when you're in a submarine? Yeah. Um, who's do, got the time? Who's got the fucking time? It did look pretty sexy when they were all greased up and all that. Yeah, I, rag- I imagine Centurions shave their legs. Oh, at the very least, their chests and yeah. stuff. Yeah, you know, because they want to... There, there, there was one... <laughs> it was so obvious. When there was the, um, the scene where um, the, the merchant comes to Masala getting massaged. Yeah. And he gives the, he shows his big, uh, <laughs> he shows this big box of treasure. Yeah. <laughs> which still doesn't sound much better than where our brains were going. But he opened up his big box of treasure. <laughs> yeah. He shows all of his crown jewels and, yeah. and, and he's like, this is how much I'm willing to bet. Well, there's, everyone's getting massaged. It's like some kind of spa or something. Yeah. 
and they clearly got like the fittest guy on set with like the <laughs> the bricky, like yeah. the most solid yeah. abs, the most defined muscles. Yeah, to 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 just be there like as an extra, yeah. but looking muscly as fuck and being all oiled up. It's like, oh, can, can we next try we we'll get the guy with all yeah. the, the the muscles in the shot, please? Can we go again? But I want more abs. Imagine the like the casting for that. You literally just like you just take your top off and you're fully just objectified. <laughs> like, well, I mean, how many? Okay, we need some muscular men. Okay, like come in, like right. Can you take your top off, please? Yep, that's good enough. Thank you. That must happen all the time. That, oh yeah, like... yeah, I'm sure it does. But that's it's just like pretty. It's just not our world. Just yeah, I know. Just how crazy is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's absolutely mental. <laughs> and being just totally fine with that, like because that's what you do. You know, yeah. you, you are. You just your your life is building your body now. In one of the scenes in Rome where Ben Hur, yeah, just going back to the film if we can, um, when Ben Hur is in Rome and he's being made the son of this Azure guy, yeah, uh, there's a little band that plays in the back, and we quickly see the band playing, yeah, and there's a there's a recorder, so there's the the wind instrument a recorder, there's one mouthpiece and there's two, there's it's like it's like a it's like an A or like an upside down V, right, right, and there's this it's, it's a double recorder jordan it's a double recorder. yeah i saw that that's fucking cool yeah it's cool is that not cool we never see those instruments you know now. it's cooler when people uh get two flutes and use their nose to play them that's a bit gross no that's that's no gross. no on the nose there's I... the meme the guy where he plays john cena's uh theme. <laughs> yeah of course i've seen that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course it's hilarious. Yeah. But also, like, I don't want to... Especially doing that back in the day. <laughs> Being an actual respected musician for it. <laughs> just rocking on, or even, like, just during the times where there was some proper hot jazz in, like, you know, some smoky, like, little dingy club, like, downstairs, just, like, everyone's, like, in zoot suits, and you just rock onto the stage. It's like, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Put the... put Get your two flutes out, silver, of course. Put them up to get your nose. <laughs> You've got the real book in front of you. You're just going through <laughs> some jazz standards. But you just play John Cena in different keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're playing, yeah, the rest of the band's playing Fly Me Do 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 Yeah. Yeah, of course. That's how it should have gone down. That's see, if I had my way, Kieran, the music industry would be very different. <laughs> okay, Jordan. Who would you like to be in this film and what the fuck would you do? Uh, I would like to be Ben Hur. Okay. Um, and I would probably just kill Masala to begin with um, once I'd seen that he's gone t as far as to actually like try and imprison me. Like, you know, so when there's the scene where he goes to throw the spear. Yeah. You would um, have actually. And, and he him. throws it at the wall because he's like, I can't kill my friend. Uh, I would have thrown it straight for his head because also what that does is it makes the film probably last about 20 minutes. Yep, which, which is good. Which is a drastic improvement. Yep, absolutely. So I'm all for that. Yep. We are aware that the whole point of the film is like he becomes something that he was his enemy. Yeah. So, so I mean, it, it, that he... Oh, we just shortcut. He just, yeah, he ends up at the same place. This The film hasn't changed. I mean, what sucks is that he would probably go to prison still afterwards. But his his mum and sister might not get leprosy. But they also might get killed by association, as yeah. an example. Yeah, and they do get cured of the leprosy at the end of the film as well. So yeah. maybe that wouldn't happen. Maybe Jesus wouldn't like that ending. But I'm absolutely... Well, <laughs> I don't think Jesus would like many of the endings that we put forward. No, probably not. But, but I'm all for the film only lasting 20 minutes. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back on the, the justifications or the you know the retorts that we just did yeah and go back to the just make it 20 minutes and it's fine right so i'm with you yeah i would be esther and i would not lie i would not lie to judah to ben i would not lie well, to yeah him. you tell him that his mum and sister are alive i keep wanting to say mum and dad it's really throwing yeah, me off yeah but the way that that esther lied to him in the first place i think mm. that could have been handled differently and what about bringing would you who would you bring into the film i would it bring can't it. be batman i mean i i I'd never considered. Okay, it's just we've got we've had too many Batman's. <laughs> Have we? I've never thought in Batman. He's my go-to option when I panic. Oh, <laughs> I I always think that your go-to option when you panic is something to do with Will Smith, but that was ages ago. Yeah, I've kind of moved past that. Okay, I think okay, I've had okay. Darth Vader a couple of times, Batman a couple of times, and a lot of Will Smith. There was one that I was thinking of, like I, I kept. I, well, yeah, whenever there's some kind of investigation kind of film, I always want to bring in Sherlock Holmes. 
right. because it just solves the thing so much quicker yeah. because he's the best detective ever. Anyway, um, I into this film, I yeah. would bring in Bigger Stickers from Life of Brian. <laughs> yeah, nice. Because I want him to be the person who makes the speech after the chariot yeah, race. Just because that would be fun. Just because it would be hilarious. And also, actually, could... if you think about it as well, that's another one that that film hits that beat at the same point, doesn't it? Where there's like the talk the to the people and that sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also, thing. also, like I, I swear, at the beginning of Life of Brian, there's the there's, there's sermon the sermon on the mount. It, Huh? There's there's a sermon on the mount, like Jesus is doing his thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when is, yeah. Brian and his mum yeah. are like, they, they start talking, and the people next to him are like, "Would you please be quiet? We're trying to hear a sermon. We can barely hear anything as as it is." So they do actually, yeah, bring it up. Who would you bring in? Um, it's not so much a who as much as an it. That's fine. <laughs> that's all right. Okay, I'm into it. Um, have you ever read or consumed any of the Dune novel or films? What? No. What are you, it's never sandworms, heard of... Kieran. I want to bring sandworms into the film. Ugh. So there, I've got a little picture for you here. Oh no, this is going to gross just me so out. So you just know what we're talking about. Uh. It's there. So basically, <laughs> it's like, like a big old, a big old massive man worm uh. thing. So um, picture like uh, the size of a whale, a blue whale, but it's a worm. And it eats things, and it lives in the sand. Um, oh, that's so gross. Yeah, I want to bring them in and and have them eat Marcellus at the start of the film. So or, the film's only twenty minutes again. <laughs> okay, so there's that. But also, what about when they walk all of the slaves? Yeah, it's mate, and, it, and they walk across. It really sand throws dunes. a spanner into the entire film. It, it, but, um, yeah, I and think so, that's so, what it needs: some actual stuff going on, like some some interesting, you know, things to happen in yeah. the film. They've, you know. Judah's been betrayed. He's, he's, his family have been taken away from him. He's lost everything that he knows. He's yeah. living as a slave for many years. You know, he's really hard worked. There's the Messiah is coming about this time. You know, the Jewish people are, are being squashed by the Romans and Rome is becoming an even stronger empire. And there's all of these sandworms that are getting up and <laughs> eating people and it's going out of control. No one knows how to stop them. Maybe the Messiah. Maybe we have a Jesus versus sandworm action oh, scene. Imagine yes. that. Like the fucking disguise part. and Jesus flies down fucking like <laughs> some sort of holy sword. <laughs> Shit, man. Like turns the water, turns the sand into wine. All the sandworms get drunk and, and decide to leave. <laughs> I don't really know where I was going with <laughs> the end of that. But yeah. I want to brilliant. sandworms. <laughs> great, great, great. Sandworms. Okay, cool. That was petrifying, but also brilliant. Thank you. Now, Jordan. Yeah. Would you stay indoors to watch Ben-Hur? Oh, without a, se- a shadow of a doubt, I would. Yeah, absolutely loved it. Oh, stop yeah. shitting me, Jordan. No, I fucking hated it. It's like, ridiculous. It was just there's so a long. there's a There's a new one that come out in 2016, I which, think. Which I will also not Ben-Hur, watch. which is two hours long. Even a lot still. more straightforward. Not on the list, though, because it probably isn't very good. Well, yeah, I'm wondering why this is. Is this film only on the list because it was such an epic? It must be. Because to be fair, for 1959, it looks like quite a well produced film. The colours are really nice. I mean, it's obviously been remastered and stuff like that. But... Yeah, and, and, and there were some points. Yeah, so it was remastered very well, to be fair. Yeah. And also, there were some points where, like, this, the, you know how they draw a state, like, backgrounds and landscapes and stuff. Yeah. Like, there were points where I was like, okay, I can tell that's drawn. Yeah. But there were points where I was like, actually, I know that that's drawn because it must be. Yeah. But fuck me, that's really good. Yeah. So, so yeah, for the time, it was good and everything. But again, like, I'm bored of watching films that were sick because of the time. Yeah, same. Like, (laughs) I'm really, really sick of it. We're in 2019. Like, it's, we've gone past that point. Yeah. So many of the films on this list are just there because people like really respect them for what they did to the industry kind of thing. And, yeah, it's you like, know, like the, really, but but it's not actually a good film these days. Like, yeah, that's annoying. Yeah. And what about you? Would you would you no, stay? In? Yeah, no, because yeah, I don't. I, I, it was hard enough to schedule four hours to watch this film. Yeah, yeah. The amount of things I can do in that time, you know. Yeah, oh, I agree. Jeez. So don't stay indoors to watch Ben Hur. We did it so that you didn't have to. Yeah, exactly. Now. If you want to join us next week, Jordan, can you just pad for time a little bit? Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, if you want to join us next week, what you need to do is uh, summon an eagle. Uh, we will then I tell you what, it, it's, commune it's, with the eagle via Eagle Talk. Uh, it's a new app that you can get on any Android or <laughs> Apple phone. Um, it has a picture of a beak on it and you speak into the beak. Speak into the beak. That's the nice. slogan. Or you could speak summon, to the beak. You could summon an eagle, or you could summon the Maltese Falcon. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. Which, which is a film that we were going to watch 
next week. Yes. So we will see you for that film next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. Hey, you. Actually, not even everyone. You listening. I mean, it's the same thing. Everyone and you. There's the collective, the individual. Who even cares? I just want to say we really do care about you and how you feel about us. Don't fucking lie. Okay, I care. All right. <laughs> Thank I you. I, I, I care. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Validate me, not Jordan, please. Thank you very much. And you can send a five-star glowing review on Apple Podcasts. And I tell you what, individual slash group slash people, like... That really does make a difference. It really, 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 really does. It does. So it actually, it actually does. It for real, it does. And as in like, you know, the algorithms and making sure that other people can check us out, that whole thing. You can send an email with your 15 second pitch to 250reasons at gmail.com. No, you guys fucked it that time real bad. I just don't. You are changing it. <laughs> Every time you are changing it. There's no consistency in this whatsoever. And you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at 250 Reasons. You can also subscribe to us wherever you found this podcast and go listen to previous episodes. Wonderful. And remember, love yourself because no one else will. Bye. <laughs>